On the seventh day, God rested and probably had a beer. Probably a Belgian beer. Probably this beer. My name is Ollie, and today we're drinking the world's greatest beer. Two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand and four, two thousand and five, two thousand six, two thousand and seven, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand and ten, two thousand and eleven, two thousand and twelve, two thousand and thirteen, two thousand and fourteen, and probably two thousand and fifteen. Those are the years since two thousand and two that this beer has been voted the best in the world by someone somewhere. The West Flitteran Twelve. Sounds like somebody sneezed while they were naming their gang. But this is actually from a monastery in Fletteren in Belgium that's been around since 1838. In 1931, the Abbey started selling its beer to the public. It employs three external workers, mostly for manual labour tasks, and everything else is under the monks' control. It remains the only Trappist brewery where the monks do 100% of the brewing. They sell this beer to be able to support the monastery upkeep and for other philanthropic causes. They do no advertising, and they only brew as much as they need to sell, regardless of demand. It's basically the worst business model that's ever existed. But remember, these guys aren't businessmen. They're not even brewers. Father Abbott, who works at the brewery, summed it up nicely. We're not brewers. We are monks. We brew beer to be able to afford being monks. As I mentioned in a previous episode, Brighton Tom kindly gifted me a bottle of this beer to save me queuing up in early morning outside Fletcheron to pick up a case myself. It's the 12 name, and it was introduced in 1942. It's 10... It's 10%... 10.2%? Not gonna better drive to the shops. Can't drive to the shops. You'll notice how utterly beautiful this bottle is. There's no label on it, there's just this small indentation. All the necessary information is written around the top, including the ingredients. Recent EU legislation, however, has required beer bottles to have the origin of ingredients on it, and there's no room left on there, which means this could well be one of the last West Veteran bottles without a label on it. It's bottle conditioned and has so much sediment at the bottom. A lot of people actually like to wait a few years. Uh, to allow the beer to ferment a little more, to develop a little more, but I can't wait that long. I've even got butterflies at how excited I am to finally get my hands on one of these beers. I'm preparing for a wave of beer geek abuse because I'm not drinking this out of a traditional Belgian beer glass, I'm actually drinking out of a good old British straight. This will be the first beer that I have out of my very own pint-sized glass, which is the coolest thing I think I've ever owned. If I could use the first beer that I ever drunk out of this glass, Pretty sure I wanted it to be the best beer in the world. Here we go. Hey guys, Ollie here. So I finished the beer and I put the card in the computer and I came to edit it and realised that the camera stopped filming as soon as I, as soon as I started pouring it in the glass, um, which means I've lost the beer review altogether. Um, it's not like any other Belgian beer I've ever had, but that's all I'm going to say. If you live in Europe get a case. If you live in somewhere else, get someone to get you a case. It's like watching a trailer before a film. I don't want to spoil the experience for you by telling you what to expect when hopefully you do get your hands on a bottle. All I can say is that if you're a person that has a bucket list and you love beer, then please put drinking a bottle of West Fletter and 12 at the top. I've been Ollie, thank you so much for watching. Remember to follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and I'll see you next time. Wow! Look at that! Goodness me! It does look a bit like ice, it's sort of very thick. That is amazing! Good old blue seaweed and blue one.